Good evening. Welcome to tonight's program from the Newark Public Library, archiving the history of the Essex County Parks. Uh, I'm Tom Ankner, director of the Charles F. Cummings New Jersey Information Center at the Newark Public Library. Before we get started, I just wanted to take a moment to encourage you all to vote by November 3rd. We have been hearing a lot about the presidential race this year, but there are also elections for the US House and for one of New Jersey's US Senate seats. Voters will also be asked to weigh in on three public questions, including one on legalizing recreational marijuana. Please vote if you haven't already. Well, tonight we will be taking a look at the history of the oldest county park system in the United States. The Essex County Parks were established in 1895 and are celebrating their 125th anniversary this year. An exhibit is on display at the Newark Public Library's main building until the end of the year. Tonight, Essex County Parks archivist Kathy Call will be showing you items from the collection of the Parks Department. Uh, later, I will talk about some of the material dealing with the parks and the collection of the Newark Public Library. Then Kathy and I will talk and take questions from the audience. We ask that everyone keep their video and audio off during tonight's program, so Kathy and I are the only ones on camera. If you have a question or a comment, type it in the chat box and we will try to get to it later. So it is my pleasure tonight to introduce Kathy Call, the Essex County Parks Archivist. Kathy has also worked as an archivist at the Newark Public Library, the Belleville Public Library, and at Wakefern, the parent company of the ShopRite supermarket chain. Kathy, welcome. Thank you for being here tonight. Well, thank you, Tom. And th thank you for uh, all of you for your interest in the history of Essex County Parks and the Parks Archive. I am so appreciative of Newark Public Library for hosting our exhibit on the 125th anniversary of the Essex County Park System and to Tom Ankner for coordinating everything. Um, we had to pare back a lot of our celebrations. So um, it's nice that we have um, this still able to go ahead with the exhibit. Um, with the centennial celebration of the parks in 1995, there was renewed interest in the old records and efforts were made to establish the archives. I was brought on to assist 18 years ago and hired full time in 2015. So having to do a virtual event tonight actually gave me the opportunity to give you all a tour of the parks archives. And I'm sitting in our building here. Um, it, the parks archives is in the parks administration building at 115 Clifton Avenue in Newark. We're catty corner from the Cathedral Basilica and their chimes just finished. I don't know if you heard them um, a little earlier, but um, this building, the Parks Administration building was built in 1916 when the park system was about 20 years old. The Park Commission was concerned at that time for the safety of its growing collection of park plans from famous architects, um, landscape architects, uh, Bogart and Barrett and the Olmsted brothers, but also um, Carrera and Hastings and um, other um, building architects uh, as well. So um, the plans had been up until that point housed in an old frame, wood frame building. I understand it had been a saloon and dance hall prior to that. Not that that would make it any more likely to go up in flames, but um, their, so the, their concern led them to set aside funds for a new all, all concrete construction fireproof building to be located on an appendage of Branchbrook Park the southern division here called Garside Square. So for the next 15 minutes, come tour the archives with me as I share my screen and a video of a tour I recorded earlier. Welcome to the archives of the Essex County Park System. The archives are an institutional archives and therefore most of our records in our collection are, are records and papers that were part of the, um, were generated by the Essex County Park Commission itself between 1895 and 1979, by the preliminary park commission in 1894, and by the successor department of 
Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs. Now, um, like most archives, not all of our collection is paper. And so I will show you a little, our mini museum here um, with some of our treasures that we have. Um, we have here the original doorbell from um, this building that was built in 1916. Um, you can see that, that there was an alarm or notification when someone used the telephone booth. We also have some of our early uh, park ordinances. And um, there is a copy from the Architectural Forum magazine uh, with the floor from the 1920s with the floor plan of this building. We also have the uh, stamp that made the seal for the Park Commission. And here is a treasure that was donated to us recently by someone who purchased it on eBay. But this is a medal that was won by one of the Essex County Park Police in the swimming competition every year of the police practiced their life-saving skills and um, had some competition. So as a park, um, as an archives for the park commission and for the park system, um, one of the most important, the foundational parts of our arc collection are the minutes of the commission. And so here's the first volume that has been conserved. And this volume and several of the others were handwritten. And so we have here the first, the minutes of the meeting from the first meeting of the preliminary commission. And then from the first meeting of the permanent commission. And most of these are in um, the handwriting of Alonzo Church, who was the early secretary. We have some, uh, here's a copy, or the original of our, of a later minutes book from the 1950s as well. And um, another very important thing, one of the first things that we have people look at, and anybody researching here, are the annual reports that were produced. So they tell a lot more detail than the minutes about uh, the um, development of the parks and the activities happening there. So here's a collection, um, one of the earlier ones um, that were bound special for the commissioners, um, some of the copies for them, and then some, uh, as you can see then, some of the later ones had photos. Um, as a park system, Another extremely important part of our collection are the maps and plans. And that's the next thing that I'll show you. These compact storage devices were purchased for this building to hold the maps and plans. As you can see, they were re required to be rolled here. Um, we, a few years ago, we have scanned all our maps and plans. The ones remaining in this storage are ones that are too large for the flat files upstairs. Now, though this one may seem like it's, it's small, it's actually long. Some of these are so long that to see what they were, we had to open them up in the hallway. So, um, and this is a primary reason why this building was built to, because this was the most precious part of the collection, even in 1916. So now the rest of our maps and plans and the most of our collections are upstairs. And so let's go there. steps were designed to allow the draftsmen and engineers access here on this floor to their um, 
blueprint processing and um, printmaking area. And so now we're going to go into the room that has most of our collections in the archives. And we'll continue our looking at our maps and plans. So here on the wall we have the largest of the presentation set of maps and plans that the Olmsted Brothers Landscape Architecture Firm um, drew up for these parks. We had Branchbrook Park, then Eagle Rock, and then over on the other wall we have South Mountain and Greekway. So they designed these general plans um, for most of the early parks, about a dozen of the earliest parks in our system. And the smaller ones are here, here in this drawer. And as you can see, here's one from Anderson Park in Montclair. These were designed for presentation purposes. We also have um, some aerial photos. And this is one of the, um, it was my favorite, I think, from about the late, in, in sometime in the 1920s of the Southern Division of Branchbrook Park. You can see where the reservoir was, our administrative building. Um, the Cathedral Basilica was still being built. And it looks like there's still water in the Morris Canal, just to the west of the park. So that um, would be, that was a drain sometime in 1927. So that's one of our treasures there. And then the rest of the maps and plans, like I mentioned downstairs, the ones that know, that, that are small enough to fit in these flat files come up he, came up here and are um, kept flat. So we have other collections here in the archives. On this wall, we have our photographic collections. We're still processing these. Um, so we have photos and slides. Here we have uh, agreements. These are legal agreements. Uh, a lot of them are uh, de uh, with the title search and um, property acquisitions. But there are other agreements too. We have specifications, engineering documents, plant lists. Uh, archival copy of our annual reports and other things. We also have correspondence here, both incoming correspondence and outgoing correspondence. The early outgoing correspondence were, were done in these tissue books. So this thin, this copy was kept in this thin tissue and they were hand indexed. The indexes have been transcribed to a finding aid, they just have the um, the recipient of the letter, not a subject. But it still is helpful in um, searching. And the outgoing correspondence, here we have some samples of that. Some of it includes things like telegrams, um, the text messages of their day. And then what I find particularly interesting, not something you would necessarily research at a parks library, but the, um, the letterheads on some of these are rather interesting. Here we have a bill for shoeing horses from P.J. Smith and Sons, Horseshoeing Establishment, 1907. And here is a letter on a letterhead from Murphy Varnish Company. This was from Franklin Murphy from 1895 until 1920 when he died, except uh, he was um, on the Park Commission, and except for the uh, years when he was governor of New Jersey. So those are our outgoing or incoming correspondence. We also have financial some financial documents here and I can quick show you some of the ones that I find most interesting. Here are vouchers from very early on and they include things like the salary paid to the secretary of the Park Commission, um, quarterly payment for telephone rent at $27.50, some of them include payments for property, here purchase of land for the commission, and, and other expenses in those vouchers. 
And then here in this financial, this book is of maintenance expenses. A lovely book. And so some of the things listed here in 1910 are sand, repairing of revolvers for the park police, shoeing of horses, lumber, and so on. It gives a real sense of the kinds of materials and the things that were needed then, and you could do a comparison between then and now. So finally in this room, we have on this wall our newspaper clipping scrapbooks the original, may have been digitized, and we also have newsletters, loose news, news clippings, and then we have a whole section that's miscellaneous, so things that don't fit in any of the other categories related to our parks are here, including for some of the parks, um, some of the papers of the Friends or the Conservancy group for that park. Hi, I'm Frank Short, and I've worked with the Parks Archives for around two years. I've selected three photo, photographs from the oversized, our oversized photos collection that I worked on digitizing uh, when I first came, when I first started my job here. Um, this first photo we have is of Independence Park, and it is it showcases the exer exercise equipment that was located in the park, and it draws on a theme of exercise equipment that we. Uh, go over in our exhibit. The next photo graph I've chosen is that of the Dorset horn sheep that were uh, kept at Weequake Park in around 1910. This small flock eventually grew to about 100 sheep and they also kept uh, different species of deer, swan, and ducks at Weequake Park at this time. My final photograph is of the Essex County Parks Police, which were engaged in a swimming competition. Uh, to the left, with the uh, with the bald head and the mustache, is Thomas Jolhuli, who was the chief of the police at that time. So here are some of my favorite things that I found over the years while working here, and they all come from our correspondence collection from 1907 to 1908. This one, this handwritten letter, is in, in, written in German, and I have translated it, and it tells an interesting story. Dear sir, to the park commissioners, yesterday evening after fishing, when pulling the anchor up, I had the misfortune to capsize and could only just hold on to the boat. Park policeman, Mr. P. Haynes, was soon on the spot, helped me into his boat, and took me to the boathouse which you see that he gets the small enclosed acknowledgement for his brave conduct, conduct and quick action. So our park police um, were very helpful to um, park goers at that time. The next thing I want to show you is this little postcard. And um, it comes, um, so as we purchased land, sometimes there were already houses on it. And this land um, happened to be in East Orange, I think was for what, Sessing Park, happened to have um, a house on it, and the person had moved away, uh, was moving away, but he didn't have water at his new location, and so he says, um, have not yet been connected with sewer in my house, and if you don't mind, I would like to use the closet in 168, which was his old resident, and we're talking about a water closet or toilet, until they are ready are ready to move the house. I have my goods all out, but only want the use of the closet until the city can connect, say. So, um, and we have some other funny things that we've come across. And this wouldn't seem to be funny. This kind of um, correspondence, this stationery with the black border indicates that someone, that this family, or this person writing was in mourning for, from the death in a family. And so I thought this was going to be very serious, was interested in knowing, I mean, it is serious, but we'll see how it goes. Gentlemen, we have two large alligators, six feet long, which we have had for the last 15 years. My father always took care and was very proud of them. 
And as, so as he died three weeks ago, we feel as though we would not like to keep them any longer. They are no trouble at all. When the cold weather comes, we put them down the cellar where they remain without food or water until spring. They are then brought up and only need feeding once a week, which consists of 10 to 12 counts worth of quartz, maybe, I'm not sure, of raw meat. If you think they would be an attraction to one of the parks, they can be purchased for $35. Hoping to hear from you in the near future. I am respectfully yours. So who knows, you couldn't go down in the basement to get any canned goods during the winter, and um, it didn't say what they fed on in the yard <laughs> in the spring and summer. Um, but that is one of the treasures that I found in the archives. And so if you would ever be interested in um, doing any kind of research here at the archives, uh, please contact us ahead and we can make an appointment. Oh, that was great, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was terrific. So um, deep in Wequaic Park, huh? <laughs> Sheep in Wequaic Park, right? Yeah. Yes. They're, they even brought the shepherd from Dorset. Oh, wow. Um, wow. A young man who, who came to be there. Yes. And then um, in World War I, they sold, well, they sold the wool, but we have some correspondence where um, with the War Department, they were selling the wool to um, the Oaks family in Bloomfield um, for use there. I just wanted to say a little something um, before I turn it over to you about our exhibit. Um, 125 years is a lot of history to pack into a rather small exhibit. And we have so many wonderful documents, but um, the interpretation required to build context around, say, an excerpt from the minutes would have severely limited um, the scope of the display. And therefore, I chose to use only our photograph collection. We have lots of photographs and slides, and thanks to Newark Public Library, we have even more that, that were rescued um, probably pro from probable destruction years ago. I considered a purely chronological telling of the history, similar to this first panel of the display, a copy of it's behind me here. Um, however, our collection is uh, has uneven coverage by decade and by park um, with 24 parks and five reservations, plus other facilities, that would have been a very large and would have been uneven. So in the end, we went with a thematic coverage with panels on following topics, um, landscape, water, playgrounds, recreation facilities, structures, buildings, and people. And then the final panel is about the archives where our efforts go to preserve the documents for another 125 years. And, um, oh, I should mention our, our park system, most of our parks, at least those early ones, were designed by um, the Olmsted Brothers landscape architecture firm, sons of Frederick Law Olmsted Sr. So certainly that whole philosophy that they bring to that, um, we, we talk about that a little bit in the exhibit, but that, um, that can be seen anytime in our parks as well. And so now I'll let Tom tell about the Essex County Park materials at Newark Public Library. So, but before we get to that, Kathy, a couple of questions that are in the chat box. Um, sure. so we're showing the maps. Somebody wants to know, are these maps available for viewing? Yes, you could make an appointment to come see them. We do not have any, we have quite a bit of things digitized, but not available online. So, um, but, but certain, so certain maps we would show you um, on a monitor and others you could see the original of. Um, you would need to make an appointment to come. Okay. Um, somebody else has asked, who was the architect for the Parks Department building? This building was designed by, what was his first name? Something Van Buren McGonagall. He 
he was a New Jersey um, architect and um, did other buildings. He worked on a war, World War I memorial or, or museum that's out in uh, Kansas City. Um, but he did other things around here, including um, he, he worked, also did decorative work and his wife did decorative friezes on this building but he worked on Franklin Murphy's um, Newark house, which used to stand, I believe at Lincoln Park. And he worked, um, he designed um, Frederick Murphy's, Franklin Murphy's, um, his weekend house in Morris County, uh, which I believe is still there. It became a private school. I'm not sure exactly what. So he did do some other, um, other uh, buildings around. Okay, and you've got some compliments. Uh, Gary says, good job, Kathy. Nice tour. It's been a while since I was there, so this was a refresher. Someone else, Helen, says, very interesting. Thank you. Uh, Ed says, thank you. Um, and also, just in case anyone wants to know when they could come and see the exhibit at the Newark Public Library, the library is open. For those of you who don't know, we are open 10 to 5, uh, Monday through Friday, and 10 to 2 on Saturday. And the exhibit is on view anytime the library is open. You can come in. It's on the first floor um, and, you know, just stop by if you um, are in the area and you want to see it. It's a, it's a small exhibit. It's only a um, short hallway. It's not on one of the second or third floor galleries. It's on the first floor and it's kind of smallish gallery, but it's uh, in interesting things, large panels like the one behind Kathy. Um, and so when you have a chance, uh, we hope to see you at the library. So now I want to talk. Yeah, this, is, this is a smaller size. But yes, there's this. I did see another question about the parks in World War II. Um, just briefly say that. So oh, okay. um, there, there are military <laughs> connections with our parks um, for over different different um, wars and so on. But in World War II, um, the one the War Department wanted use of Weequake Park, and so they had to meet with um, the park commissioners, and we actually have a receipt from their meal their lunch at the newark club in newark um or a listing of what they they ordered but um in the end the war department had to um i think they had to confiscate the park or we couldn't the park commission wasn't allowed to just let them use it but they worked it out um there was the um practically they nearly the whole park was used um for a barracks and then other buildings for the Eastern Air something. I'm not. I'm not certain what, but it was. Right, it's right close, right next to um, Newark Airport. So that proximity was what they were was helpful. And then after the war, um, a lot of the buildings were were. Um, it was reverted to park, but in the center. The barracks were, were then used for um, veterans housing um, for quite a few years. Um, I know somebody who went to kindergarten there. And um, then we had um, also at some of our other facilities, there were anti-air um, anti aircraft lights and, and different assemblies. So in Branch Brook, some of those were after the war. And um, uh, so at Mills Reservation, there's still a concrete pad that was used for lights during World War II as well. Okay, okay. So now let me talk about some of the collections at the Newark Public Library um, that have to do with the parks. So this is my, uh, let's go to my beginning. Ah, oh, there we go. All right, so, um, all right, so this is the uh, this is just the uh, flyer that we created for this program tonight. Um, so I want to talk about a few of the things in our collection that pertain to the Essex County Park parks. First of all, postcards. We have a very large postcard collection, and there are two. We have um, postcards dealing with the parks in our main postcard collection, plus also in the Kurt Landsberger post postcard collection. And I'll talk a little bit more about. Kurt Landsberger later, but I'll just show you some of the postcards from his collection now. First of all, in the picture collection, the general picture collection at the Newark Public Library, uh, here are two uh, examples of parks, um, of park postcards. The one on the left is the clubhouse at Wequaic Park, uh, and the one on the lower bottom, on the lower right, 
is the fountain in Branchbrook Park. And you can see, um, you can see the building of um, these cathedral in the background, plus um, the, old, um, the old Barringer High School as well. So these are some, um, these are some um, postcards from the Landsberger collection. Uh, he has some uh, very colorful ones in his collection. These have been digitized and we can um, make them available to you easily. We don't have them online, but we have them digitized so we can email them to you if you want any. Um, this, the one on the left is the Rose, are the Rose Gardens at McQuaig Park. The one on the right is the Bridge to Clark's Island in Branchbrook Park. Oops. Just a minute. Oh, there we go. So those were those are just a few a few examples of postcards. But we have a very large postcard collection. So we also have many photographs in our collection, including photographs of the parks. Uh, photos are, are generally arranged by the name of the park or by the name of the town. They're divided into different collections. Uh, just examples of a few of the photos that we have. Um, these are photos from South Mountain Reservation. That photo on the left is very familiar to me because it's, you know, when you go, when we go hiking in South Mountain Reservation, we always get to this um, uh, area where we can look over the valley and um, it's always a nice view from there. Uh, the, and the photo on the right is just of a nice meadow in the park. Um, here are some pictures of Branch Brook Park and on dated photo. Oh, I th actually, I think the one on the left is from 1897 when they were just building the park. Um, and then the one on the right are, uh, is from a later period, ice skaters in the park. You can see um, the Sacred Heart Cathedral in the background. Uh, we have photos of other parks as well. Eagle Rock Reservation is the one on the left, a nice cliff face. And then people playing bocce in Watsessing Park in Bloomfield is on the right. Um, I also wanted to talk about a few of the uh, archival collections that we have that have a lot of material about the parks, because it's not just about visual material. There's also, there are also records and personal papers and reports, et cetera, et cetera. So the Kathleen Gallup collection is the first archival collection I'd like to talk about. Uh, Kathleen Gallup is an attorney from Newark. She co-founded the Newark Cherry Blossom Festival. Uh, she helped get landmark designation for Branchbrook Park. She wrote the um, National Register application form. Um, she served on the Essex County Parks Advisory Council uh, beginning in the 70s when the um, commission became the department in the mid 70s. Later, she worked as Essex County's Historic Preservation Officer. And she also co-authored a book about Branch Park. Um, her collection includes a lot of information about the Cherry Blossom Festival, of course, because she founded it, she co-founded it. Um, she, the historic register nomination for Branchbrook Park is in there, but you can probably also find that online. Most of those nominations are, um, most of those forms are available online. Um, a lot of correspondence is in her collection um, and notes related to Branchbrook Park. She also has a series of annual reports and other historical information about the Essex County Park system. Uh, the other uh, archival collection I want to talk about is the Kurt Landsberger collection. Um, Kurt Landsberger uh, was a Czechoslovak Czechoslovakian immigrant. Uh, he was born in Czechoslovakia in 1920. He came to the United States in 1939, and he lived mo um, most of the rest of his life, I believe, in Verona. Um, he was an environmentalist, a newspaper columnist, and a businessman. Um, he founded a group called Save the Mountain in 1981 to save uh, Kipps Castle and the Hilltop property in Western Essex County, and he died in 2014. Not long before he died, he donated a large collection of materials to the Newark Public Library. Those, that collection includes minutes and correspondence and notes and membership lists associated with Save the Mountain. Uh, he also um, donated several clippings and press releases, flyers and reports, as well as a very large collection of postcards. And I showed you a few postcards a little while ago. Uh, most of the material uh, in his collection that was related to efforts to preserve Kipps Castle and Hilltop, the Hilltop properties. Um, if you want, now, neither the Gallup collection nor the Landsberger collection, um, other than the postcards in the Landsberger collection have been digitized. And so, uh, and even, even the postcards in the Landsberger collection, only some of the postcards have been digitized. So in order to view this material, you would have to come into the library and you can make an appointment uh, to view them if by coming into the library. Um, in addition to those archival collections and the photos and the postcards, we also have some park 
Park Publications in our collection. Um, Park News was a publication that started in 1935, went up into the 70s. We have um, either a full run or an almost full run of the um, of that publication. The uh, image on the left. More than us. More than you? Oh, really? Oh, that's good to know. I didn't know that. Okay. So um, the, the, the image on the left is the is volume one, number one of, uh, of Park News, published in October 1935. Um, so we have it back to the beginning. And we do have it into the 70s. I think we are missing a few issues, but I think we have a, almost a complete run. It's most it's pretty full um, bound volumes on the shelf. Um, for late that for later years, we have uh, we've begun collecting the spirit of Essex. Uh, the, the image on the right is uh, the cover of uh, an issue from 2019, the spring 2019 issue. We have it beginning in 2014. I don't think we have every issue, um, but we do have um, a fair number of issues for you to look at. Um, we also have a lot of clippings in our collection um, associated with the parks. Um, these are two. Um, these are two articles from the Newark Evening News morgue. Back in the mid 70s, we acquired the Clippings morgue of the Newark Evening News. The Newark Evening News was a newspaper, uh, for those of you who don't know that, um, folded in 1972. And a couple of years after it folded, we obtained their Clippings morgue, their Clippings archive, and their photo archive. And, you, and um, Back and in the late 1990s, we microfilmed the Clippings Archive. And these are two articles about the, the Essex County Parks from the Clippings Archive. The one on the left was one that caught my eye. It's a clipping from 1955, uh, an article from the New York Evening News. Park Board hires firm to survey sites for zoo and indoor skating rink. So this is um, the beginning of the um, building of um, what, what became Turtleback Zoo eventually. Uh, Turtleback Zoo, which opened in 1963. This was eight years earlier, just beginning to plan for having a zoo on the site. Uh, the uh, clipping on the right is from 1961, uh, the Nutley Park action set. This was about the, uh, the Reinheimer, Reinheimer Park, which I think, believe exists, but I'm not sure is a county park. It's right, Kathy? Not. It's it's a municipal park. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, uh, but th these were these were two articles that were in the um, the Newark Evening News Clippings Morgue under the uh, county park system. Uh, so they were involved in it in some way and at least establishing it. I I, I guess. Uh, so these were the the Newark Evening News Morgue is a terrific source uh, if you're doing research uh, on anything in uh, Newark or uh, New Jersey or Essex County. Uh, and so, um, and we have an index available online. The clippings themselves are not online. You'd have to come into the library to view the microfilm, or if you want to, um, or if you, or if you want a file that you see a, um, a a listing for in the index online, we can send you those. We can download and send you those articles. Um, other place, we also um, clipped uh, articles on our own. I mean, in addition to getting the Newark Evening News clippings, we also clipped our own. Articles. We have an information file uh, that we divide into two parts. We have a historic information file and a current information file. The historic information file are basically clippings until about 1970. The current information file goes from 1970 to the present, and we are still clipping. Uh, the article on the left is, of course, from the historic information file, an article from 1929 from the Essex County Parks folder. Uh, the clipping on the right is about is from the Essex County Parks folder in the current uh, information file. It's an article from 2012 about uh, Turtleback Zoo. So we also have some microfilm. Those, those ones on the left, I, those ones on the, the left are really wonderful, wonderful um, descriptions of the parks. Um, I think there was also one about Independence Park um, as in. Eastside Park as well. Um, I don't know who wrote them. I, I have a suspicion that maybe somebody who did, but anyway, they're they're just really wonderful. They paint a picture of the parks. Oh, okay. Good, good to know. So we also have microfilm, thanks to Kathy. She had a pro an, um, a grant a few years ago, right? And she you um, microfilmed many of the uh, materials in your collection and you gave us a copy of the microfilm. Uh, these are scrapbooks and annual reports beginning in the 1890s and going right up until the 1970s. So, well, and, and you, 
part of the grant said that I had to give uh, microfilm to a, a repository, um, but also the scrapbooks, though they were started by the Park Commission, um, it ended up that more of them were actually, they, they had asked the um, library to index them and more of them were actually at the library. And I don't know, at some point, maybe the library took over that, doing that completely. But um, so um, anyway, that was again, a joint uh, collaboration, thanks to Newark Public Library. Um, and yes, so of course we would share the microphone. <laughs> okay, and we and we really appreciate it. So let me show you some examples from the microfilm. These are two clippings from the um, from the microfilm of the scrapbooks. The article on the left is from 1894. Uh, now for new parks, uh, Judge Depew appoints fire, uh, five commissioners favorable to the plans. This was this was the appointing of the initial commission, the initial commissioners from the the Essex County Parks Commission. Um, the article on the right is from 1901. It shows the initial layout of Watsessing Park in Bloomfield. A nice diagram there and an article accompanying it. Uh, we also have annual reports in, on the microfilm. Uh, the, um, the image on the left is the cover page of the first annual report, uh, from eight, which covers 1894 to 1895. And the issue on the, the image on the right is a, an image of Hemlock Falls from, I believe, the 1897 annual report. And that is, oops, and that is my presentation. So if we, uh, if anybody has any other questions. Um, oh, well, uh, well, Gary is asking, when was the park in front of Newark Public Library created? Um, Gary, that's not a county park. That's actually a city park. Uh, but that has been in Newark since its founding, we believe, since the 1660s. It's been called Washington Park since 1795, and it was recently, I don't know if it's been officially renamed Harriet Tubman Square, but it will be very soon, most likely the procedure for renaming the park was uh, um, initiated recently. But it uh, became Washington Park in um, 1795, and it's been part of Newark since the city was founded, but it's not, it's not a county park, it's a, um, it's a city park. And if anybody else has any other questions, um, I'd love to hear them for either me or for um, or for Kathy. Okay, doesn't look like anybody else has any other questions. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Kathy. Um, I hope you all go see the exhibit. Yes, yeah, please go. I hope you all see the exhibit. Oh, so I want to, yeah, so now you, you, um, I actually have some questions for you, Kathy. So you, um, so you, uh, you, you said that you became the, um, the Essex County Parks archivist in 2002. And there was not an archivist there before you worked there, right? That's correct. Um, there were a couple people, Kathleen Gallup, and then um, there was a, a, a retired librarian. Um, they had help to establish the archives. They got some grant money to and, and um, got a room set aside and some flat files and shelving and so on. But um, there was really no one to, pro none of the processing started um, until, yes, until they hired me. And that was as a grant part-time, 10, 10 hours a week as a grant. Um, part of the grant, um, but then um, I was kept on, but um, really as a, I don't know, I was a purchase order or a consultant um, for many years. And then um, and then in 2015, I was hired full time. So it must have been a huge so job certainly you started to organize all of that stuff, right? I mean, it, it must have been. Yes, it was. I mean, I started out on just you know one series, one one group of things, the annual reports, and then we looked at the others. Um, some of the things were being conserved at the time that they had already um, started co conservation with Northeast um, Document Conservation Center of the minutes, and also um, some of the maps. So those had been grant um, grant projects that they started before I came. Um, certainly, the um, current park. Um, it, it really got started, I think, when with the um, 100th anniversary and um, 
my boss, Daniel Savante, has been Parks Director for 25 years as of last week. And um, so he cared about the, um, the archives and the historic, the history of this first ever um, county park system. And then um, you know, our current county executive has, um, you know, really supported the, the current and the future um, maintenance and building and development of our parks. So, um, so that's that, that I think accounts for them hiring someone to be full-time archivist. Okay. Hmm. So you basically create, I mean, you had to kind of create this archive. I mean, the material was there, but you had to organize it, right? I mean, that's, uh, Right. And I mean, one of the, the whole the foundations of archives is you should keep things the way they, they were in the order that they were, but these things had been in basements and moved here and there and, and were quite a bit out of order. Um, a lot of our agreements had come from, in the, in the late 1950s, had come from a law office. Um, the music, I, sorry, oh. my ears are ringing. We can't um, hear it. I can't hear it. Somebody's driving by. Yeah. yeah. Uh, somebody's driving by. Uh, I, I thought you could hear it from down. <laughs> You're only no. a few blocks away. It was that loud. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, no. So um, I'm sorry. Where were, I, I don't even know where I was with that. Oh, um, but, just talking um, about organize, but basically creating this, uh, oh, this guide, yeah. having this material, so, having to organize it. The, um, so the legal agreements have come from in the 1950s from the law office from the, uh, that had been the counsel for the um, park commission, um, and so yes, they were just in boxes. A lot of the maps were in bins. Um, in fact, we found um, a collection that hasn't of maps that hasn't been scanned. They were in an extra storage room, and they were marked in the 1960s. They've been marked to be gotten rid of only nobody ever got around to getting rid of them. So um, some of them are, I probably, I might get rid of them. They might be, I don't know, just, oh, some of them were like a map of some other town or some other city, someplace else outside of New Jersey even. But some of them were the only maps and plans that I found for the um, Passaic River Parkway, which was used to be part of the park system. Um, it was in Belleville and Nutley along the Passaic River, it included a parkway, a, dry, a, a road, but also um, a playground, basketball, green space. Um, when, the city, uh, when the state needed to um, expand McCarter Highway and Route 21 is that, that, that goes along there, um, um, that was the end of, of Passaic River Parkway. And I still have never seen any photographs of it. So if anybody mm -hmm. has any photographs of the Passaic River Parkway, I would love to see them. Um, but I have, I do have the plans now. Oh, great, great. Okay. Well, thank you, Kathy, for joining me tonight. And thank you to everyone else who tuned in this evening. Remember the exhibit marking the 125th anniversary of the Essex County Parks is at the Newark Public Library until the end of the year. It is on the first floor of the main library now. If you have a chance, please visit. Remember, if you haven't already, vote by November 3rd. Good night, everyone. Be safe.